Hello, and thank you for watching this presentation by the American Iron Society. Please support the organization by becoming a member. Go to irises.org and click on join. Thank you. We're happy to have Stephanie Markham tonight from Region 1. Uh, Stephanie has been growing and hybridizing irises on more than three acres in eastern Massachusetts since moving there in the early 1980s, where she is focused on breeding irises that can thrive in the difficult New England climate. She is an active member of Region 1 of the American Iris Society, the Median Iris Society, Tall Bearded Iris Society, and local AIS affiliates, particularly ISM, the Iris Society of Massachusetts. She currently serves as an AIS master judge, and she is the judge's training chairperson for Region 1. So without um, further ado, Stephanie, welcome. Uh, thank you. Nice to see everybody. This is probably the biggest crowd I've ever had for a judge's training in my life. Um, I just noticed something in the chat. Somebody was asking for the link to the test, Andy, if you might want to post it a second time. All right. Tonight's talk is on um, judging bearded irises garden plants. Um, I know uh, I've been perusing catalogs lately, and the, one of the things that I've noticed as I peruse all of the catalogs as they come out on the websites, um, as, as people bring them out, is that um, all of the pictures are, or almost all of the pictures are of single flowers. And yeah, I know, I love beautiful iris flower as much as anybody. Um, but in the end, our duty as judges is to judge them as garden plants. And we're making our recommendations based on how they are as garden plants. Um, this picture here is my garden. Well, it's part of my gardens. Um, on the left over here, mostly tall bearded, although down at this end is almost all of miniature talls. This is part of my seedling bed. And then there's more gardens out there, way out there in the distance. I usually do this presentation or a presentation on this topic in the garden. And I usually do it using a Socratic method where I ask everybody what they think based on what we're talking about, which I can't do here. So hopefully um, you'll be able to ask your questions in the chat and we can get, get going that way. But what I did when I was putting it together as a presentation for a slideshow is I was pawing through the latest and greatest judges training handbook, pulling out some quotes. Um, these quotes are from the handbook. And really early on in the handbook, what it says is the primary duty of the AIS judge is to evaluate iris in the garden. And that something that I'm, I'm sure we all know, but perhaps sometimes we forget, all the awards that are voted on the official AIS ballot are based on garden judging. They're not based on show judging. They're not based on pictures in a catalog. I know this is a topic that's also covered in ethics class, but um, <clears throat> I think sometimes, you know, this time of year, especially when the only way we can see irises is in the catalogs and on the websites, um, it's really tough. And then we're making decisions about which ones that we want to buy and all that sort of thing. Um, and of course, we buy for the beautiful flowers. But in the end, when we're, we're, when we're passing judgment on them, we're judging them as, as plants in the garden. Um, up here in New England, our climate is difficult <clears throat> for two reasons really cold winters and really hot summers, to be honest. So sometimes we had, last summer we had a terrible, terrible drought, which, and if you don't have additional watering, it can be difficult to keep anything alive, even bearded irises, which are really good with drought, but still. Um, this winter we have not, we have had below zero temperatures and we have had temperatures in the 60s and 70s one day following the other. And that is, I think, worse for the plants than if it would snow and stay cold for, the, for a month or two. Another thing that it says in the judge's training handbook that I, I kind of like, like to take to heart is that the awards must always be based on the total iris. I actually think this is, as I recall, this comes out of the uh, tall bearded standard, but I think it's something to live by for all of the classes of bearded irises. It's actually probably something that should be lived by for all classes of irises, period. Um, you need to look at the whole thing. It's not just about the flower, although the flower is very important, of course. It's not even just about the bloom stalk on a tall bearded, for example. You have to look at the whole thing. And 
one of the most important things of judging a garden iris is that it grow well and produce sufficient increase, that it bloom well and produce enough blossoms over a long enough period of time. Um, most of the standards say two weeks, we need two weeks, at least two weeks. Um, and if we can get that longer, that's great. Repeat bloom is something that we try for, although that's very difficult to do here. We Most rebloomers don't rebloom up here. We have like three irises that will reliably, reliably rebloom up here. Um, although in Connecticut, there the rebloomers may rebloom up here where I am, not so much. And in Maine, it's kind of hopeless. And they need to resist disease. Um, we have diseases, we all have diseases, but we want to grow irises that do their best to resist them. There are point scales for most of the classes of irises. And while they can be useful, especially when you're getting started as a judge for kind of guiding you through looking at an iris and evaluating an iris in a different, in, in particular class, um, once you've done it for a while, it's really, it, you don't want to let it become a straitjacket is basically the point that I want to make about that. Um, the other thing that I noticed when I was putting this together, I'd never actually put these all on the same slide. I've always had them on separate slides. And I realized that with one exception, the number one thing in the point scale is not the flower. It's usually number two. Sometimes on TVs, it's number three. But plant, in all in the these three median classes, actually all the median classes, proportion is the first thing. And if you're talking to my mother, she would say proportion is the first thing in every class. Um, in the MDBs, the flower is first and has the highest number of points. But that may be because there are flower improvements are um, something we're trying really hard to get in MDBs. In any case, when you're using the point scale, just keep in mind that you don't want it to be a prescription. It's not, it's not a straight jab, it's not a prescription, you know, it, it's a guideline um, that you use when you're kind of looking at the different aspects of the iris. And that's really all I want to say about the point scores. We're not going to point score on this. Um, Looking at some of the different classes of beardeds, um, starting with the miniature dwarfs. One of the things that it says in the standard for miniature dwarfs that, that you can kind of just take it and say, this is the key to miniature dwarfs, is that daintiness is an essential quality of them. That all the plant dimensions must be scaled down proportional, proportionately to maintain a dainty appearance. You don't want them looking horsey. It's tough to look horsey in something that's only eight, only eight inches tall, which is the maximum height for miniature dwarfs. And since most of them come from Pumila, although nowadays there are more and more of them that are um, SDB bred, um, there are other things involved in some of the MDBs we're getting these days. And to be honest with you, I've got some diploid MTBs that could probably pass for MDBs if I wanted to introduce them that way although I haven't done that. Um, this is a very old MDB that I've been growing for years. I've moved it a few times. It's B. Warburton's Blue Doll from 1958. I still think it's one of the cutest little MDBs I've got. They should have small and dainty flowers and proportion, which is mentioned in just about every standard. Proportion is really important. The flowers need proportion, be in proportion to the overall plant. They're, they've got tiny little leaves, tiny little stems, tiny little flowers. Um, if it's five inches, you don't want a larger flower on it. If it's eight inches, you don't want a tiny, tiny flower on it unless it's got quite a few. When I was pawing through my uh, photographs, I was looking for one where proportion was perhaps, where there was some issue with proportion. And what I would say about this MDB <clears throat> is the flowers look a little large for 
the overall plant, at least in this photograph. It's a beautiful little thing, but flowers look a little on the larger side for the size of the plant, which is really quite tiny. In any case, when you're evaluating it actually in the garden, you can tell whether it looks like it's in proportion or not. Photographs can lie. The proportion of the plant, one of the things that you don't want, and frankly, you don't want this in any class, but it's more obvious in MDVs, is you, you need the foliage to be short. You don't want the foliage to go above the flowers. You don't want the foliage to be huge and wide proportionally to the other plant parts, the stem and the flowers. And if it does have branching, it shouldn't, it shouldn't crowd the clump. You shouldn't, it shouldn't look too messy. Um, this picture over here, uh, I don't, this is not the way this blooms normally, but this particular photograph shows the flowers all blooming way down inside the leaves. If this was the way this iris bloomed normally, you probably wouldn't want to be considering it for awards. If you've observed it over a couple of years and that's the way it blooms and it blooms that way all the time, then perhaps perhaps there's an issue here and you shouldn't consider awarding it. One of the things that the standard actually says is that, that miniature dwarfs are particularly effective in rock gardens or planted in drifts where they make a quote, carpet of color, which is true. I grow them on the top of a stone wall. Some people grow them in, um, um, in basically in scree in, in large barrels around here. Um, but they're great rock garden plants. And in fact, I think the Rock Garden Society up here um, recommends some MDBs for their, for their members. I'm not a member of the Rock Garden Club, but I think we have members who are. The other thing that you need to do is make sure that it blooms long enough. A flash in the pan doesn't do you a whole lot of good. If it's going to be good in the garden, it needs to bloom for a, a couple of weeks anyway. And there's a couple of ways you can get this. Um, the way Iris pumila, which is where MDBs come from originally, does it is by putting up a whole bunch of stalks per rhizome. Um, another way is to put up, put is to have each socket have multiple buds. You know, a three budded socket is going to do you very nicely. And some of the newer hybrids that involve other things like uh, SDVs or even MTVs, Irisophila even, um, will have branching, which is not present in most of the early, most of the, most of the, um, a lot of MDBs, but you can get it in some. You just need to make sure that it doesn't look messy. But if you can get a carpet of color that lasts for two or more weeks, then that's a good MDD. The standard dwarfs, um, what the standard says about that is that they should be very free blooming and withstand adverse weather conditions better than most classes of viruses. Now, I don't know why they have to do it better than most classes of viruses, but the point is they should be something that that will bloom regardless of whether we have a good winter or a bad winter um, around here. And the good news is for the most part, a lot of the, the MDBs, sorry, the standard dwarfs bloom, bloom very well here. Um, this is a clump, this may be a, like a four or five year clump of, um, of an MDB I grow in my garden. This is a section of one of my gardens, the front, front edge of one of my bearded gardens full of nice clumps of miniature dwarfs, I mean, standard dwarfs, blooming regardless of the fact that our winter can vary from 12 below zero to um, 60 or 70 over the course of a few days, and that we can have anything from five feet of snow to nothing over the course of a few days or weeks. It can be very chill, and we get these late spring freezes, which can basically freeze every every bloom stalk on the plant. And, and for, for the most part, we still get decent bloom. One of the problems um, these these irises are examples of things that can happen if the weather isn't 
if if the if the uh, standard dwarf is not particularly good about dealing with adverse weather, this one on the right here um, does doesn't clump up particularly well. If that's a three year clump, that's not a very good three year clump. And this here is one that tends in um, cold weather to make extra parts. That's a problem for us up here. Um, and I have actually taken irises and tossed them even though I love them because they regularly make extra parts. Now I'll forgive an iris if it does it one year and five, but I'm not gonna forgive an iris if it does it every single spring and you get you know five falls and six standards and four style arms. Um, a lot of them do fours, the ones that do it. And I won't vote for one that does that on a regular basis. And I won't, I won't keep it in my garden either, frankly. It's just something that just annoys me too much to keep. And it's not a, it's not something that we should reward, reward as, as judges when we're judging standard dwarfs in the garden. Uh, most of you know that the height range for standard dwarfs is between eight and 16 inches. Um, the blooms should be up to four inches wide combined width and height should be between 3.4 and 6.8 inches, more or less. The stems can be branched or not. There are usually at least two terminal buds and a spur, so they usually have three buds. Even the older ones will have three buds. Uh, nowadays, people have been breeding them so that they're, they have more buds and more branches. Um, the leaves should not be taller than the height of the bloom stalk. You don't want the blooms buried in the leaves. And if it does, this one is this one is a, a lovely older uh, standard dwarf, and it it blooms right above the foliage. It makes this beautiful mound. It has, I think, I think this one has three buds per stalk, but it puts up multiple stalks. You see, it's got some blooming here and it's got some that haven't bloomed yet. So it sort of sequences its stock. So it puts up puts up a good two weeks worth of bloom over. over. This one um, from this picture, you can sort of see that the leaves are above the flowers. The good news is that's not how this one usually blooms. The bad news is this is how it bloomed in this picture. And if it bloomed this way regularly where the leaves are above the flowers, then I probably wouldn't want to vote for, for awards, even though it's got a really striking flower. The other thing we need to keep in mind when we're looking at irises and judging them in the garden is that judging a first year plant is not a great idea. You don't want to make your, your ballot decision based on a first year plant, or at least not based solely on a first year plant. Um, this is a first year plant. Well, this is actually a second year plant. This is probably a third year. I think this is the third year of this particular iris. But, uh, but they don't necessarily look the way they're gonna look on a first year plant. So you need to look at two or three year clumps because the first year plant is often not gonna look like what the thing really looks like, which means you need to see it more than once. So you shouldn't be voting awards for irises that you've only seen once in the garden. Unless, well, unless you see them on two or three year clumps. Proportion. When my mother did judges training, she would say proportion, proportion, proportion. There is only one thing, proportion. Absence of good proportion should be severely penalized and should preclude an iris, a standard dwarf in this case, from receiving any awards. Which is another reason why we have to look at them in the garden. The proportion that you see in the show bench is not the proportion you're going to see in the garden. These are all different, but they're all in, they all do have lovely proportion. You can see that the flowers are balanced with the, with the foliage, not too tall, not too short, not too crowded. This is a little taller, but also not too, not, it's well out of the foliage and the, uh, and the flower looks lovely with the, in, inside the clump. And we want at least 10 to 15 days of bloom. Uh, there's a couple of ways of getting this. One is more buds per stock, as long as it doesn't get crowded. 
Another is more stocks. Um, and sequential bloom helps a lot. This is one here that puts up stocks over a period of time. This um, is not my picture, and I don't grow this iris, but it's an example of an iris that is uh, an SDB that's branched. And as long as the flowers are out of the foliage and it doesn't exceed the height limit, and it's proportionally very nice, then there's no reason why we can't have a, this is, the, I believe this has six or seven buds. Um, it's got two branches, a spur and the terminal socket, which at least has at least two. So there's six or seven buds in this, which is unusual for most traditional SDBs, but the hybridizers have been working very hard to get this to happen. The other thing you need to worry about, and this is with all beardeds, but the standard dwarfs, is that you need enough increase so that the plant doesn't bloom out. As you can see, this is the this is kind of late in the life of the bloom, bloom of this particular iris, and there's plenty of increase, three or four per bloom stock, um, so that next year the clump will be even bigger and better. I have had irises where they bloom beautifully um, or they bloom well, and then they put on two increase and then both increase bloom and then they put on one increase and the clump never really gets much bigger. If they don't, if they don't make a nice clump, standard dwarfs in particular should make a nice clump. They want a nice clump for a nice display. Distinctiveness is a characteristic that's in just about all of the point scoring standards and is covered separately in all of them. And there's a lot of things that can be distinctive and there's a lot of things that have been, that have been, um, that people have been doing with standard dwarf breeding in recent years. Um, most of this stuff didn't exist when I first started growing irises. Some of these colors are just wild. Um, really bright, fabulous patterns, color breaks, um, just keep in mind that no matter how fabulous the flower um, or the, how exotic the flower, you really need to make sure that the plant looks beautiful as well, that it's displayed on a beautiful plant, that it looks beautiful and in proportion and makes a lovely clump. Um, without that, it's just, just, the distinctiveness is kind of lost. Um, border beardeds, intermediate beardeds, and miniature talls, which range from 16 to 27 and a half inches tall, um, they all share a height range, but they, they come from different places and they have a, a number of different distinctions. When you put them side by side, there's a, a border bearded, an ivy, and some miniature talls. When you put them all side by side, you can kind of see um, what the difference is. Um, and it comes from, and, and then when you're looking through the classes and you're judging the classes, you need to keep those, those distinctions in mind. They come, uh, they have, a, there are a lot of diverse sources for some of the traits that are being bred into the different classes. I put a couple of examples here. Iris of Phila is one of the things that's been being used in MTB, border bearded, and IB breeding. Actually, it's been used in SDB breeding too um, to get some of that branching down there. Um, some of the results have been IBs, border bearded, miniature talls, and some have been introduced as SpeSex because they don't really work in any of those classes. Um, these are a couple of SpeSex that could probably have been introduced as Ibis, but my these are both my mother's irises, and she decided to introduce them as species because they're half iris of Philo. Another th something that has helped out the miniature tall class is Iris Asticanica, which um, is a very tiny thing with a billion branches and a billion buds that has been worked into the MTB class. Um, Astro Girl is half Astrocanica. 
although it was introduced as an MTB because it makes a very lovely little MTA. So looking at border beardeds. Border beardeds, um, border beardeds, you really, really, really need to, to look at the proportion and balance. The blooms should be no more than five inches in width with eight inches combined height and width and height, height is here to here and width is fall tip to fall tip. Um, the standard has changed for border beardeds and we now require two branches and seven buds. So that's just something to keep in mind. Those of you who may not have taken a look at the new, the changes to the handbook, um, the border bearded standard has changed the standard to seven buds. And of course, we don't want the leaves interfering with the flowers. We want the flowers to come up out of the leaves. When you're looking at branching and bud count, like I said, you need two branches and you need seven buds minimum. You also need to present them nicely. Um, more than any other of the these three median classes, BB, IB, and MTB, um, or as much anyway, you, you really need to take a look at the bloom stalk and the way the flowers are presented on that stalk. These are all different examples of different border beardeds. I would say, I mean, this is a lovely presentation. This one has a lovely presentation. This one has a very nice presentation. And this one's probably a little crowded on the stem. Um, this one is presented very low, very beautifully. Actually, we don't have the whole thing. We just have the top of it here. This one here is one that seems to put its buds all at the top. And as a border bearded, this is not good. As a border bearded also, if you count the buds, you can see that there aren't enough. It's missing a branch. But even if it had a branch, what's going on up here is a little on the crowded side. This is the bloom stalk of an iris that hasn't bloomed yet. And sometimes, you know, sometimes these things are just as beautiful in bud as they are in bloom. I like looking at a sea of buds in the garden is is very satisfying if you ask me. I, I like the way, I kind of like it if the buds, if the branches and the buds and the, you know, a little bit of red highlighting on the edges here. This is just very pretty. This one here, um, you can see that everything is kind of, again, crowded up onto the top. Um, it has enough branches. It may have enough buds. I can't count buds because I'm not in the garden. But, um, when this blooms, it's all going to bloom right up here. None of it is going to bloom up and down the stalk, which might be a problem. One of the things that um, you see in border beards is there are not a lot of examples of shorter border beards. Um, there's no preference for taller border beards, but because most of them come from TB breeding or smooch, scaled down TB breeding. Um, it's, it, it, there haven't been that many that are um, on the, in the lower end of the height scale. Nevertheless, there are two border beardeds here. And this one, this white one in the back here is at the top of the height scale. And this violet one in the front here is a little smaller. Um, Regardless of how they go, regardless of whether they're at the top of the scale or lower down the scale, scale of height, you've got to make sure, or you should make sure that they're in proportion and balanced, um, that the size of the flowers and the amount of flowering and where the flowers are on the stem are all balanced so the proportion, so that they look right in proportion. It's terribly important in border beards. The other thing, a percent, it, so much so that it talks about proportion all over the standard. Flower size, length, and width of foliage, diameter stem need to be reduced proportionally with plant height. A pronounced lack of overall proportion disqualifies the plant for consideration from award. Um, these are both border beardeds. 
And I would say, and neither one of them is in proportion. This one has way bigger flowers than it should for the height of the, of the iris. Um, that's actually a picture of Batik. And this one also, um, if this is the way it normally blooms, is blooming with way too big of a flower on way too short of a stalk. Now there's a whole lot of other problems going on here. Um, the issue of disease resistance is one of them. Variegated foliage is wonderful, but if this is the way the foliage usually is, then that's probably not a good thing. This one here um, is actually kind of nice in terms of proportion, although you might say that it's a little too crowded up here. That might just be the photograph, though. Um, this one looks kind of large, but again, that may be the photograph. The other thing about border bearded is, is that it's not just about the flower size in relationship to the height, it's also about the color mass. You can get the same effect by having larger flowers on taller stems, or, have, or you could go to the same height and have smaller flowers on the same height stem as long as you have more of them. Um, so color mass can give you uh, the proportion that you want in border bearded. And so that's another way to look at them in the garden. And this is another one where the flowers are a little smaller, but the color mass um, gives you a proportional flower size. The other thing about branching and bud count um, is that we need to make sure that they also bloom for as long as possible. Again, we're trying for a couple of weeks. And the way you can get that is by having more buds um, or um, sequencing stalks. The other problem that border beards have had, although less so recently, is some of them are not very vigorous. I've been growing this border bearded for a number of years. I think I have, I have never moved it. I think I've been, I think it's been there for 10 years. And that's as much plant as I've ever had. Um, it just doesn't increase sufficiently. And the problem with that, of course, is if it doesn't increase sufficiently, you're just not going to have enough, you're just not going to have enough plant to get a decent display. Um, or if it doesn't increase enough, you could it could bloom out entirely and then you'll lose it. So we should not be rewarding these as judges if they don't grow well. Now, if it grows really well for somebody down the road and it just doesn't grow well for me, I'll consider that my problem. Um, if some of my neighbors can grow it or some other people in the region can grow it or, or I see it growing really well in several other gardens, that's a whole other story. Um, this particular iris is just a very, very reluctant grower. I only keep it because it's got a beautiful face and I breed with it. <laughs> so, but when I breed with it, I breed with it to something with vigor. Distinctiveness can be what you'd expect it to be, some new and unusual color pattern um, or combination of patterns. We've got a iridescent black thing. This is, this is my mother's iris. This is my mother's iris. This is mine. Um, but the other thing that you can, that can be distinctive about an iris is the way it grows. Um, a plant habit like that, especially in border beards, which used to not be the best growers on the world. Um, getting a really vigorous plant is something that could be distinct, considered distinctive in border beards. IBs um, as a class are supposed to be vigorous and generous of bloom. The standard says they are quote, unexcelled as versatile and obliging garden subjects, typically having great vigor and being especially generous of bloom. Um, this is not my garden. 
This is a garden in the Pacific Northwest. Um, this is an IB bed. This is the way IBs should bloom. You really want them to be a nice massed garden subject. This is my garden. Um, I've got one in bloom here, one in bloom here, and this one is gonna be in bloom soon. The blooms on IBs can be smaller, a little less um, fancy. The stalks can be branched. Um, again, just like all other irises, you want them outside of the foliage. Nestling inside the foliage is not, that. being hidden by the foliage is just not a good plant trait. Um, IBs come from, originally came from SDB to tall bearded breeding. And as a result, you ended up with a lot of stems that didn't have all that many buds but they would put up a lot of buds, uh, you know, a lot of stalks, sorry. Um, with using irisophila and some other things, um, people have been getting way better branching in the IBs. This is an IB with beautiful branching, actually, smaller flowers, but gorgeous branching and, it, and a lot of nice flowers. Whereas this is probably a more typical one with maybe four flowers, flowers per stalk. Now, the, the problem with IBs that don't have as many flowers per stalk if they don't put up enough stalks or they don't put them up sequentially, sequentially there are a number of IBs that will bloom, be done blooming in a week. And that's a problem because just like all the other classes, you want them to last a couple of weeks. Um, the criteria for judging the branching and bud count are considerably less restrictive. Um, four buds per stalk is fine as long as there's enough stalks. And again, as long as there's enough flowers to keep them in bloom for a couple of weeks. And you need to make sure that the flowers are presented without crowding. You don't want a mess. And um, over a sufficient time. And so that you can actually enjoy the flower mass. This is an older iris called Ming. Um, it's a yellow luminata. And in New England, we don't have that many hardy luminatas, but this one's very hardy. Um, this is the plant when it's putting up its initial stems. And this is the plant probably a week in, and it's got another week to go. And it does last a good long time. I think it's got five buds per stalk. But just because we don't have as restrict as many restrictions on bud count and branching, it doesn't mean that we don't um, need balance. Uh, we still need balance in the bloom stalk. You don't want everything all crowded at the top. You don't want them nestled down in the leaves. You don't want them squished up against their stems. You want them presented well on the plant. You don't want the foliage to interfere with the blooms. Um, this is not the way this usually grows, but if it were, I uh, would have a problem awarding this, uh, voting for this iris because it's blooming well way down in its foliage and the foliage is obscuring the flowers. Viga, as um, an old New Englander used to say, is one of the most important things about intermediates. A lack of vigor must be severely penalized. It says so in the standard, and I agree. If it's not vigorous, what's the, there's really no point. They need to be vigorous. That's what their that's their hallmark: vigor, floriferousness, disease freeness. That's what they need to be. This, if this is the way this was good, was growing regularly would be a problem. I think this is actually just a first year plant, but but the other, but that we have had IBs here where, you know, they make one or two increase, they don't, they don't grow that well, they get winter damaged, and it's it's not something that we want to be voting awards for, no matter how um, wonderful the flower is. Vigor, reliable bloom, disease resistant neat growth habits. If we don't have those, we must not be voting them awards. 
these all these do have those. <laughs> so do these. This is uh, the front of one of my iris, one of my um, bearded beds. Miniature tall beardeds um, are a little bit different. They're not simply tall bearded irises with small flowers. All aspects of the plant are far daintier. The flowers are not more than six inches combined height and width. That's really small. If you take a ruler and look at what three inches, I mean, six inches, what, you know, like three by three, say three by three, it's really not very big at all. And that's at the top of the height range. If you're, if you're gonna scale it down to the bottom of the height range, you'd need much smaller flowers. The flowers need to be on wiry, flexuous, curving stalks. There are actual size restrictions to the stalks. It's probably the only standard that does have that. Um, you want thin, wiry, graceful stalks. You don't want thick, clubby stalks on a miniature talls. The fact of the matter is most of them still are diploids and they will be much smaller. There are tetraploids now that are coming out that are also that do meet the standard and should be rewarded because we get some very interesting color combinations from them. But they've got to be dainty. All aspects of the plant must be dainty, much daintier than border beardeds or ibis, which reside in the same height range. This is also a change to the standard that we need a total of seven buds. It didn't used to be that, it has changed to seven buds. So that's another um, change to the standard that you should be aware of. The stalks shouldn't be ramrod stiff, none of these are. This is a very, this one, whoops, wait a minute, let me go back. This iris here on the right, far right, is Tom Tit. It's a very old, very old MTB. It only has five buds, I believe. Um, these others, these others will meet the, the current standard. Um, this would probably not. By dainty, I mean dainty. Um, I grow this iris. Um, if it had been my iris and I were introducing it, I would have introduced it as an IB, not an MTB, because the flowers are too big for it to be considered far daintier. They're just, it just doesn't look like an MTB. The, the proportions are just not MTB-like. These are, these MTBs, some are older, some are newer, and they all look like MTBs. This, you can get a little crazed with the, as, all aspects of the plant are far daintier. This iris is probably 12 inches. If that, it might be 10. Um, so it's gone a little off the deep end in daintiness. It's a seedling, so we'll forgive it for that. Um, <clears throat> we'll use it for breeding. And like I said, I've, I've got some that are even smaller than this that have the branching of an MTB, tiny, tiny, minuscule little flowers, and could probably be introduced as miniature dwarfs if I felt like it. One of the things to note about miniature talls when you're evaluating them is because the flowers are so much smaller than the other classes, it doesn't give you a lot of room for um, ruffles, lace, horns, you know, all that sort of thing. Um, if you get more than say this much crunchy ruffling or a little ruffling here, a little ruffling here, that's about as much as a flower the size can take. If you put much more on it, it would distort the flower altogether probably wouldn't even look like an iris. A little ruffling, a little lace, a tiny little horn. I have had a seedling with a tiny little horn, but I haven't seen any introduced. Um, great, but if you go off the deep end with it, it's going to distort the flower and it's just not going to look right. Like the other classes, we want them to bloom above their foliage. Please, please, everybody bloom above your foliage. Some of these are older, some of them are newer. But they do bloom well above their foliage. This one in the middle is one of mine. Um, I just wanted to point out something about the, 
um, the stem. This one has purple everywhere. There's purple on the space, purple on the buds. It's got purple on the leaf bases too. Um, it, it's almost prettier in bud than it is in bloom. Some of those things can add to the distinctiveness of, a, of, a, of an iris. Again, you want the display to be held well above the foliage, which all of these do manage to do, regardless of how what size they are. Stephanie. Um, yes, dear. While we're just finishing up miniature talls, um, mm. there is uh, one question about that um, five bud um, miniature tall uh, that you had shown uh, a couple slides back. And um, that was Tom Tip. Yes. And the question is would that five bud mini tall be then put in historic? Well, this particular five bud MTB is an historic. Mm -hmm. It's that old. Um, there are, because the standard only just changed this year, um, things that were introduced in prior years um, could still have only five buds. So, but we should be, when we're looking at them, we, we, we now need to evaluate them differently. Yeah. And also, we've worked uh, very hard. The MTB breeders, speaking as one, have been working really, really hard to get more bud count in the miniature talls because the early ones, you know, they came from old diploid talls, shrunk down, and a lot of them just didn't have that many buds. Yeah, I, I would say that uh, these historics, they're not being judged for awards any longer. They've already. No, been no, of course not. And uh, oh. uh, and I think maybe uh, um, she was referring and to it in historic as maybe in a show, you could put it in historic or miniature tall, either one. But absolutely. And in a show, you're not judging you're not judging them as a garden plant. In a show, you're judging them against themselves. Right. In the horticultural division of a show, you're judging an iris against itself, the best it, it can be, or the best, you know, the best it can be as a horticultural specimen. So this is how Tom Tip blooms. This is how Tom Tip blooms for everybody. If you, if I were entering this in show, whether in historic or in MTBs, and I could enter it in either one because it's that old. Um, uh, if I entered it and it was beautiful and it was clean and it was perfect and it was the best it could be, then I could get queen of show with it. <laughs> you yes. know? So. Thank but, you. Um, but the awards we're voting for are for, are for new irises anyway, so. So we just have to evaluate them a little differently than we did before. We've been, to be honest with you, as a judge, I've been, we've been rewarding our miniature talls with more bud, more more buds for a long time. Um, we've always preferred to have more. Is that it for, are there more questions? Um, no, that's, uh, I think that's all the, the questions for now. Okay. Oh, wait, I, actually, I was uh, just looking. Yeah, um, there's one that just- uh, Somebody was just, talking about IB in Texas. Yeah. Yeah, an IB that lacks vigor should not be voted. You shouldn't be voting for IBs that lack vigor for awards. So if there are new newer IVs on the market and they're not vigorous, they should you shouldn't. The hallmark of an IV is vigor; it should be vigorous. That's yeah. And then there's a little bit of a follow up on that uh, MTB. But if the rules for the MTB changed, does that change the judging? It changes. Yes. Yes, it does. I mean, yeah. Um, when we're evaluating them, we we should not be voting awards for uh, MTBs that have fewer than seven buds, or we should not. We should be taking that into consideration. You know that they should have a minimum of seven buds. Yeah, and that and that's garden judging. And then Gene Richter uh, uh, put in a clarification: show show bench judging standards should apply the standards that were in place when the iris was introduced, not necessarily current standards. So that's how exactly, you, exactly. That's how you judge. And show bench judging, show bench judging, you're judging the variety against the perfection of itself. So if an iris 
always only ever had four buds and that's the way it was introduced and that you know or five buds or whatever it is and you know you've got a perfect specimen in the show you're judging it against its perfection you're not judging it against all the other mtvs in the show until you get to the queen's table when you're judging something else but but you know what i mean but yes you're right there it's the standard that was in place when the iris was introduced exactly Oops, wait, let me back up. So, we, right. so just as uh, to separate that from show judging, what, what you're saying here, though, in garden judging, any changes right. in, in the rules affects those that are being judged um, or for awards currently. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, that's correct. And the reason... It, these changes, I mean, I'm, I was actually involved with the making of the changes. The changes, the changes follow the irises. Um, the fact of the matter is that most border beard that's being introduced today do have a minimum of seven buds. Most MTBs being introduced, actually the last 10 years, do have a minimum of seven buds. It's not something, and, and more has always been preferred anyway. So I don't think we're going to hurt ourselves any. When we award the irises that have the better bud counts, the higher bud counts, and we penalize the ones that don't. These are the ones that we want to recommend to the public. Our, the point of judging is to recommend, is to give the irises awards. Um, the point of giving them awards is that we're recommending them to the, to the public. And that's what we want to recommend for that particular class. So, Thank so you, yeah, it does. The tall bearded standard is, I don't think it did change. <laughs> I don't think there were any changes to it. Well, not, not significant ones. Anyway, the, the, the statement that awards must always be based on the total iris comes out of the tall bearded standard. Um, and by the total iris, they mean the plant, the stalk, and the flower. And the stalk is important in tall bearded because it's mostly what you see, that and the flowers. Um, again, they're taller than 25, uh, 27 and a half inches, and they have branched stalks. In fact, this is, and this is a picture of tall bearded irises in one of my beds, pretty much in full bloom. Um, some of them are taller, some of them are shorter, but The stalk must at least have two branches and the terminal. And it's been true for tall beardeds for some time that seven is the minimum number of buds. These are a couple of pictures of nicely branched bloom stalks. Don't know what the flower looks like yet. But the bloom stalks are nice. The problem with stalks that open a lot of people will will prefer a beard a tall bearded iris that blooms three at a time because um, it blooms three at a time. You can take it into the show when the queen is show. It happens all the time. The problem with it is um, if you've got seven buds per stock and you bloom three of them at a time and they last for three days and then they go by and you bloom three more and they last for three days and they go by and you bloom like the one that's left, you're not going to last 14 days. So it actually says in the standard, a stock which consistently opens three or more blooms at once almost never meets the 14 day minimum requirement for bloom. There are exceptions to this. Um, if it puts out sequential stocks, it'll bloom for two weeks. Um, this iris here blooms very, very slowly. It puts out a bloom and then a second one and then a third one and then they hang on for days and then one will go by and another one will come out and it hangs on for days and while that one's doing that a whole nother stock comes up and starts blooming so this one blooms for two weeks at least even though it does tend to bloom tend to have three open blooms at a time Like the other classes, we want the flowers above the foliage. However, 
it also says we don't want them suspended awkwardly at excessive heights. Now, none of these have that problem, but this one does. I grow this iris and it does this all the time. It suspends its flowers way the heck up here. Now the flower is really cool, but yikes. I also have to stake it, which is an issue because if I don't, it falls down in a stiff wind. This iris blooms very way, blooms way above the foliage, but it blooms all the way up and down the stalk. It's got three branches, I think, in addition to that. So it does not suspend its blooms way up here. It blooms all the way up the stalk. This is actually my iris called New Rules. There are other faults. Um, branching is important to tall bearded, so there are a lot of rules and standards about good branching and bad branching. Um, you don't want something that blooms all at the top. That's a fault that you can see on the cyrus on the right. Um, you don't want branches that toe in right to the stem. You can see that this one is it's aiming its buds in toward its stem. I thought I had pictures of some that were really bad in this way. This is only mildly that way. Um, you want the branching to occur in a nice artistic way up and down the stem. You don't want tall beardeds that fall down in bad weather. I mean, unless you've had a hurricane or a hailstorm or something like that, and of course you can figure that. But if, if an iris, tends to lay its um, uh, flowers, lay its stalks down on the ground on a regular basis, that's not a good thing. If you have to stake every single stalk and the rest of the garden, all the tall beardeds are not staked, that's a problem. This is one where the flower is too heavy for the, for the stem. You can see it just looking at the stem, it looks too thin. It's not strong enough. It has to be staked. Um, the stalk is just not strong enough for the flower. Oops. Oh, no, it's doing it again. There you go. Um, no plant is worthy of consideration if its foliage is floppy, narrow, or sparse. Um, so I thought I'd show you a sea of foliage and bloom stalks. This is a TB bed before most of them bloom. The only one in bloom is this one in front, which is a really, really early bloomer for me. All the rest of these, as you can see, the plants, the plants, the foliage is really good. <laughs> it's really nice foliage. I like to look at it even when it's just green stuff. Um, leaf spot is a problem for us. It's probably a problem for a number of you. Some years it's worse than others. If the whole garden has it, that's one thing. If a variety, um, if the rest of the garden is okay in that regard and the variety you're looking at is full of it, that's a, that's a problem. We need to seek, we really need to work on making sure that we recommend irises that have great foliage because the, the plant is in the garden the whole year. Um, yeah, it blooms for a couple of weeks in the spring. And if you're lucky, you've got rebloom. But the rest of the time, people are growing the plant and you'll have foliage. And if the foliage is really horrendous looking, then that's not a good thing. So we really have to recommend varieties that have great foliage. This is not a good example of good foliage, but to be honest with you, I think this whole garden had an issue. The other thing that annoys people about irises is if they have to um, if they have to divide them every year or every other year, they should last at least three bloom seasons. Now, I take that a little further. I have irises I haven't moved in ten years. Yes, I will whack pieces off the edges of them, but I kind of demand of my irises that they be able to stay in the same place for a very long time. Um, yeah, I want the clump to get nice and big and I want it to grow well and I want it to bloom floriferously. 
Um, and if I want to reduce it, I'll chop pieces off the sides of it and put it in our plant cell. Um, but I don't want to have to lift the whole thing and move it every year, two years. I don't even want to do it every three years. I don't want to even do it every five years. So we're really looking for varieties that will stay in the garden, stay put, and be good plants for a number of years. And uh, the standard says at least three consecutive bloom seasons, but personally, I would, I would look for things that will go even longer than that. Distinctiveness is kind of a personal thing. Um, the individual appeal, the unique qualities. This is just a really gorgeous flower on a lovely stem on a decent plant. Um, I took this picture in Keith Keppel's garden, it's a seedling of his, um, because its distinctiveness is all this purple on the stems, which is complemented by this beautiful flower, but, and it was on a decent plant too. But I just thought that it's a, just an interesting, unique thing that this particular iris has. I'm not sure he ever introduced this, but. But in the end, our objective is to cast our votes for tall beardeds with exceptional quality that consistently perform for consecutive seasons, seasons without a lot of pampering. I don't know about you guys, but I don't have time to pamper my irises. I feed them a little in the spring. I try to keep the weeds down to a dull roar. Um, I don't want to lift them and move them all the time. I've got too many of them and I don't have enough time. I've got a full-time job. I don't have time to do that too. Um, so when we're, when we're awarding plants, we want to award the ones that will perform well for a good long time. These are some examples. And some more examples. And that's not true of just tall beardeds. We should be rewarding miniature talls that will do the same. This, this area here in the front is a bunch of miniature tall beardeds and some old antiques. That's an old antique in the back. Uh, some talls here, things that just keep going and going like the ever ready bunny. This is mostly MTBs. There's even a few Siberians in bloom in this picture. Our bloom seasons are all over the map. Tall beardeds, it's an intermediate that's still blooming right here. Some MTBs over here. There's a few things over here. I think there's an arrow bread or two over there. A little bit of this and a little bit of that. But things that will keep going. And that is really all I have to say about garden judging irises.